Hello, hello, Doofer here with something a little different. So this is going to be a, uh, a sort of a vlog video uh, because I'm on holiday in Inverness just now and something very exciting is about to happen today. Um, so this video is actually kind of sponsored by my mum. Um, it's my birthday next month and my mum got me an early birthday present which is a trial flying lesson at Inverness Airport. So uh, I'm going to take you guys along for a flight and... Um, Hopefully it will be something different and something interesting uh, on this channel. So um, unfortunately, it's not going to be an amazing quality video. You know, I don't, I won't be able to record the entire flight. Uh, I'm not going to be able to record any of the, um, the sort of the communication between me, the instructor, and air traffic control. Um, but I'm going to try and sort of vlog as much of it as I can. I'm going to try and get as much footage as I can. Um, bear in mind that I will be kind of hands-on control in the plane, so I'm not sure how how much in in-flight footage I'm going to be able to get, uh, but it's going to be exciting. So um, what I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to head outside uh, so I can show you guys what it's looking like today. It's looking like a very nice day, quite cloudy, but um, let's, let's go and have a look, shall we? Okay, and there it is, Inverness. What a view. Why the hell did I move to London? That was stupid. But there you go, that's Inverness right there. So I'm on the, the sort of the west side of town at the moment. Um, so up here we've got the Black Isle, we've got Keswick Bridge. Inverness Airport is somewhere over there. You might be able to see like a little white uh, plume of smoke there. There's actually a factory not too far away from the airport, so the airport's just around there somewhere. And of course you've got the city of Inverness here. And then that's the sort of south of Inverness. And then Loch Ness is kind of way off in that direction somewhere. As you can see it's a pretty nice day, it's pretty uh, pretty cloudy. Um, let me just put the um, the METAR on the screen just now. And I made a note of it so I can narrate over this uh, this video as I'm trying to, to record. Hopefully it's all in focus, I can't really see because it's quite bright. Um, yeah, so we've got a few clouds at 1,500 feet and scattered clouds at 2,900 feet, so we're probably not going to go above 2,000, maybe 200, 2,500 feet during the flight, uh, but we might have to do a little bit of cloud dodging once we're up there. But uh, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be an almost perfect day for flying. Seagull, can you let us know what it's like, please? Get back! <laughs> anyway, so... Um, yeah, I'm going to get back down to my house, have a bit of breakfast, and then, uh, yeah, let's get out towards the airport. Okay, so I got out to Highland Aviation, the flying school at Inverness Airport, and I met my instructor there called Richard. So uh, I don't have any footage from inside the flying school because I didn't really want to kind of weird people out by, um, you know, just whipping out my phone and starting to record everyone. So, um, so yeah, so we basically we just had a, a quick chat. Um, I explained that I'm kind of I'm a flight simmer, I'm kind of so I know all the instruments. Don't treat me like a, a complete you know idiot. You know I know what I'm I, you know I know what I'm looking at when I'm inside the cockpit. So um, he basically just asked me you know where did I want to fly. Um, I had a one hour uh, sort of trial flight. So uh, what we decided on was uh, starting off at Inverness here, uh, and then we would fly towards the city of Inverness just over here. So. Uh, then we would fly part way down Loch Ness here and then turn uh, westwards at Drumna Drocket, which is just here. And there's also a nice castle on this point of land called Urquhart Castle. Uh, so we'd fly westwards down to approximately here. Uh, I can't remember the name of the, the town or the village uh, down the back here, down the back of Loch Ness. Uh, but once we reach that, we would turn uh, sort of northbound. Uh, what we were actually aiming for was uh, Ben Wivis, the mountain here. Now, when I say we were aiming for that, obviously we were going to fly over the mountain. We weren't actually aiming for the mountain itself. Uh, so we were going to turn sort of northbound there, uh, head up to uh, to Ben Wivis, try and get some nice views of that um, snow-capped mountain up there. And then uh, after we got there, that would be about 45 minutes or 30 to 40 minutes maybe, and then, uh, and then we would come back over the Black Isle here, this kind of uh, kind of mass of land here, back towards Inverness Airport. Um, 
so Richard concurred that that would be about an hour's worth of flying. Uh, he was happy with that. So basically all he did was uh, call up air traffic control, uh, just let them know that we were going to be taking uh, an aircraft out for about an hour, just giving them the kind of the, the basic routes, uh, just so they knew where we were going to be. And then uh, we headed out to the plane um, and we started doing the walk around. So here we got Piper Warrior that we're flying today, not Tomahawk, as I thought it was going to be earlier. So we're just doing a quick pre-flight, just making sure all the uh, lights and uh, the wings are not going to fall off or nothing. So I guess you're just checking the general condition of everything. Yeah, it's the first flight of the day, so it's quite a thorough check, this one. Oil is a big one. It strikes me how small the engines seem to be yeah. here. So what's the uh, cruising speed for About this? About 100. It's not too bad. So let's get it to 110 if you And the Tomahawks are about 80, is that right? 90. 90. Don't worry, I've got flight mode enabled, so we're good. <laughs> Oh right, okay, wow. And that has quite a bad effect on it. It's I can imagine. Salt water. Is it quite bumpy on a barrow as well? Uh, surprisingly smooth. It feels like you're just landing on flat concrete. Oh wow. Because I've seen, I've watched some of the, um, was it Twin Otters that land there? Yeah. And uh, always... Twin Otters. What is it? Yeah. It always looks um, quite bumpy there. Like when they're splashing through puddles and stuff. Yeah. Well, you try and you try and choose a line that's not going to take you through the puddles. Right. Uh, but when you go through one, there is a vast amount of water sprayed everywhere. So after you come back, the plane's covered in seaweed and sand. <laughs> Just checking there's no like dirt or nothing yeah, in the field. Yeah, it's usually water that we find the wheel. Sort of uh, water at the bottom of the field. Oh. You just want to make sure it's all gone. Um, I was doing this out in Spain on a Piper Warrior after a lot of rain. Yeah. And the first, the whole of the tube was water. Really? And we actually filled up about three of them before we start to get any fuel. Yikes, that's so that would have scary. Been, that would have definitely been engine failure stuff. And the, the scary thing about that was, you can kind of see that slightly blue. Yeah. But if you weren't really careful when you checked, you might just go, oh yeah, it's all water. It's all fuel. There's no water in it. Because normally it's just a tiny little bubble at the bottom. Right, got yeah. But because, or if there was quite a lot, there'd be a horizon across. But the whole thing was water, which we weren't really expecting, and it actually took. Like, so would that be just bad fuel or condensation? Uh, or? It was just rain had come in through the through there. It didn't have a good seal on it. I think right. out in Spain, apparently they don't need to worry too much about that. <laughs> yeah, well, they do if you're going to be flying planes. Yeah.
Okay, and here we are. So it's a bit zoomed in because it's a bit too close because I'm like sat quite close to the uh, to the panel here. But this is it. This is the inside of a Piper Warrior. So it looks like we got a uh, it's a Garmin GNS 430 there. So that'll be quite good. Hopefully we'll get a bit of um, bit of footage of that during the flight. So obviously you've got your six pack of instruments here, so you've got airspeed, attitude, altitude, turn coordinator, heading and vertical speed, uh, clock, uh, ADF there by the looks of it, and then obviously two, uh, hang on, where's my, where's my finger going? two VORs there, and we've got a secondary Garmin uh, GPS there as well, very cool, and that'll be my, my view at the front, hang on let me get rid of that, so this will be my kind of view out uh, here. We've got uh, Inverness Airport out there. So we've got fire, keeping an eye on us. And then we've got air traffic control. Uh, hang on, where's my finger again? Air traffic control up there. Pretty cool. Can't wait. Gonna be excited. Ah, so cool. So if anyone is wondering where we were in the airport, we started up here outside Hangar 3. Beside that you can see that we have the North Apron where GA aircraft, private aircraft and helicopters park up. And just below is the South Apron and the main terminal where commercial planes park and where passengers are loaded and unloaded. So after the last clip we taxied forward and held here at Delta and called up air traffic control. Basically, GA aircraft are free to move about in this area around the back of the airport, but once they pass Delta, then you're into the main operating area, so air traffic control need to know you're there and ready to go. Now, interestingly, at the time we got there, there was a lot of commercial traffic coming and going, so we were actually told by ATC to do our power-up checks here at Delta holding point and not at the runway. As we were doing that, a flyby plane taxied past us on Echo, heading towards the main runway. So we were cleared to follow that along runway 11 out towards the main runway. And here we are sat on the threshold of runway 29 short of the main runway. So to the left is runway 23 and that flyby plane which is just about to start its takeoff run. Now this clip cuts off quite abruptly because as soon as the plane passes us we were cleared onto the runway and I was in control for takeoff so I had to put the phone down.
Hey guys, so that's me just out of the uh, out of the plane now. I just parked up, just taking a breather really. Wow, what an experience! That was so cool. Um, I would have loved to get some more footage, um, but obviously, you know, I'm just recording on my phone just now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm committed. Well, I'm not fully committed to getting a PPL, but um, I got myself one of these. Got myself. Hopefully, that's probably back to front now. Actually, looking at that, but I've got little flight log book here and I've got two flights here so I actually flew back in October uh, which I didn't really tell anyone about it was just like a kind of little thing for me um, and then obviously today's flight there as well so uh, I've got two hours logged um, not on any official PPL course yet uh, but take that log book as being a sort of a, a symbolic commitment to doing it one day uh, because the um, the owner of the flight school over there was telling me that um, even if you do trial flying lessons and just little bits and pieces, that that can still count towards your um, your PPL because uh, I think you have to do a minimum of forty five hours. So now that I've done those two within like the past ten years, those will actually count towards my PPL uh, rating. So um, so that will hopefully shorten the amount of time when I do do when I go do go for a PPL uh, full time. Uh, or go for it full on and, and kind of do an intensive kind of course or not an intensive but like you know training regularly for it and flying regularly for it um, that will those those two trial flying lessons will count towards it which is awesome but yeah I mean that flight was awesome um, I'm probably going to do a live stream where I replicate the flights uh, but yeah we flew we took off from Inverness runway 2-3 uh, flew over the city of Inverness flew down Loch Ness uh, turned at uh, Drum the Drocket, flew over Urca Castle, we flew down, uh, well flew over a small valley um, kind of westwards and then we turned north, we climbed up to 6,000 feet, um, the air was really smooth up there, uh, much smoother than it was down because uh, we we started at about 2,000 feet and then when we turned west away from Loch Ness we climbed up to 6,000 feet which was awesome uh, the cloud like the clouds really opened up um, really nicely so that was good fun and um, yeah and then we turned north after that we went up to towards Ben Wivis uh, flew over the top of Ben Wivis unfortunately that was covered by clouds um, like really low level clouds so we couldn't like dip back under the clouds and look at Ben Wivis um, you know, pretty much the top of the mountain was in clouds, so uh, it would have been kind of dangerous to go a bit, a bit go near that. But um, we got a half decent view of it, and uh, yeah, it did uh, a couple of steep turns as well, which were awesome. Um, and the instructor said that actually did them pretty much perfectly because if you do like a steep turn perfectly, you're like flying in a very tight circle. And what happens is just as I finished the second. Um, uh, the second sort of because I did one in one direction and then the steep turn in another direction on the second steep turn that I did we actually hit like a severe bump of turbulence and the instructor said that that was a sign that I'd done it perfectly because you're actually hitting the wake turbulence of your own aircraft so yes all that training all that stuff in flight sim is worth it so that was good fun that was amazing and then we uh, we pretty much flew south from Ben Wivis uh, over the Black Isle which is over there behind the airport I don't know if you can see the airport on this camera. Um, yeah, we flew south over the Black Isle and then landed back around me two or three here in Inverness. So, uh, awesome day all around, and uh, yeah, awesome. So, I'm starving now. It's uh, half one now, so I'm absolutely starving. I'm knackered because it's quite a you know you need to be concentrated for quite a lot. So uh, I'm knackered. So I'm gonna go get some food. Hey guys, uh, so I figured that you'd actually want to see what a logbook looks like, so um, yeah, I haven't put too many details in here, but uh, these are the details of the two flights that I've put in just now, so uh, over on the left we've got the dates, we've got the aircraft type, so uh, back in October or November when I flew, um, I flew a Piper Tomahawk, the PA-38, today was a Piper Warrior, PA-28, and then you've got the registration, so we've got Golf, uh, Hotel Golf, and then Golf Zulu Lima today. You've got the uh, surname of the uh, the captain or the instructor there, uh, their kind of uh, rating, I guess you would call it, um, uh, departure and arrival airport, so Inverness to Inverness, Inverness to Inverness, and then you've got your departure time, 
uh, for both flights there. Uh, and then over on the left here, we've got um, sort of the flying time. So you can see we've got daytime, uh, single engine aircraft, and I was flying sort of as effectively the second pilot or second in command. However, even though I was in control for uh, the majority of the flight, I'm still technically, you know, lower ranked than the instructor. So we've got one hour um, as as a dual pilot there. I guess that when you uh, go solo, you would start entering your hours in uh, in the in command column there. So, and then you've also got nighttime. Same again, you know, multi engine uh, solo and with uh, with two pilots there. And then uh, yeah, you've got uh, instruments and simulated instruments. And then you've got um, the number of takeoffs and landings that you performed. So uh, for trial flights, it's just um, you know one takeoff, you fly around for a bit and come back for one landing. And um, yeah, again, for the second flight there. And yeah, I was really fortunate that I got to perform the uh, takeoffs and landings for both flights. So, And then there's a couple of uh, extra remarks there. So when you're actually studying for your PPL, you might be doing certain exercises or doing, you know, covering certain theory. So... Uh, for example, if you do circuit training, you'd get like a, a certain remark that would go in here, um, and then it gets signed off by the uh, by the uh, instructor there. So uh, there you go. That's what the uh, the inside of a uh, GA log logbook looks like. And that is the end of the vlog. So I hope you guys found this interesting. It was definitely good fun to uh, to record and do something different and create a, a new sort of style of video. I guess you would call it on the channel. Um, and yeah, and as I said, I'd love to do more videos like this where I have, you know, proper cameras and I can record an entire flight and, um, you know, show off more highlights of the flight and record air traffic control chatter and all sorts like that. So um, this is definitely something I want to try and work towards and do more like this. Um, anyway, uh, normal service will be resumed as of next Saturday. Uh, I'm not sure what the video is going to be about, uh, but I will have uh, something aviation and flight simulated out uh, next week. So... Uh, yeah, for now, thank you all very much for watching. Take care out there, and I'll catch you all later.